Progress. Okay, hello everyone. We will start in a few seconds. So does anybody have any questions over like anything about uh, curvilinear motion, rectilinear motion? So any questions, issues? Um, I had a question about the learning exercise from, I think, like, two days ago. And it was, like, the third question. The learning exercise? Yeah, let me see which one it was. Okay, so let's... It was the erratic motion one. And then I was just wondering how to solve for C, because I didn't get the right answer. This one, right? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So which one? All of them? Um, no, just C. Uh, question number three? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so um, I need to solve the problem, but um, um, I don't have the solution in my hand right now, but we, I might like give you how to solve it. So it says a uh, particle is moving along a straight line, so it's rectilinear motion, uh, with its motion described by the uh, graph below. So it has the velocity versus the time and you have it uh, like erratic motion so it is described by two curves and for c how far in meters does the conveyor belt okay so moving along oh the conveyor belt travel during 13 seconds oh so it's different questions it doesn't relate to the um So here it says a particle moving along a straight line and its motion described. And then it says here, uh, uh, the conveyor belt, which is looks like, but 
okay, let's like forget about the conveyor belt and like talk about the particle. And a straight line with its motion described uh, by the graph blue. Okay, so after 13 seconds, so let's get this into, let's get a screenshot. this and let's take it here All right, and let's put it here right. and the question the question is um, it needs the distance and after 13 second interval. So you have the velocity versus time relationship. And you know that uh, the V is equal dS dt. So you basically know how you get the distance equation from this. And dS will be equal V dt. And you will integrate from uh, S node to S and from T node to T. So it will be s minus s node equal to if you integrate the integration this integration is equal to the area under this curve because we have the vt relationship and our integration is vdt so you basically will divide this into two pieces and you will get the area of the inverse triangle which will be half multiplied by five by 1.6 plus and then you will integrate the uh, second one which will be, uh, you will get the first one, it's uh, like 1.6 trapezoid plus 0.8 over two, multiply it by 13 minus five, which is this. And this is, will give you this integration. And then the S node will be equal to zero, um, starting from rest at B zero and time zero. And so final, the S will be this value, half five, 1.6. So just like it was confusing, like the conveyor belt travels. So maybe it assumes that there is a particle uh, that moves on a conveyor belt. So, but we finally will use the 13 second uh, here. So did you get how to solve it? Mm, yes. Okay, so it's basically uh, sometimes for erratic motion, it's it's a good idea. You might like divide the motion, so you might like say uh, from t equal uh, zero up to five, and then you get the equation of this line. Like you get uh, how the v is it changing over the time, so you know the slope and you know the um, uh, the uh, the constant is equal to zero, and then you get another equation for this one from five up to 13, but this is a long way. So the best way is to get the area under the VT curve. It will be much more uh, faster. So does anybody have any other questions? All right, so um, let's move to uh, our lecture today. So uh, the last lecture we have been talking about uh, curve linear motion. And uh, we have used the Cartesian coordinate system using X and Y axis. So it basically, if, if the motion it doesn't move on straight line anymore, and it has a path like a curved path like this. And our particle is here. So we described the, the particle with a vector R from an origin and this origin could be anywhere, and we know where is the x axis and y axis, and we can define the r vector as a function of r x and r y. And similarly, if uh, as I told you from the last time, the velocity will be always tangent to the back, like this. And also, we get the v x and v y for this velocity. Similarly, the acceleration could be like in any direction, like this. And also it should have an AX and AY. So 
this is for if we want to do the analysis with respect to the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. Today, we will be using uh, another coordinate system, which is called tangent uh, normal coordinate system. So for the tangent normal coordinate system, if you have like the bass is like this, and you have the particle at some location here, and uh, here's like, let's say, here's the, uh, how we measure the distance. So this is S1, and this is S1, and this is S2. If we want to get the position, we can define it using S. However, here we will be using the uh, radius of curvature of the curve to identify the tangent and normal uh, components. So at each point, like this curve is keep changing its curvature, like it has more curvature here, less curvature there, and then more curvature. So the radius of curvature is keep changing. So, uh, so here, like this. So we call the radius of curvature rho, and this rho will be equal to r uh, for the circle. If, if this is a part of the circle like this, so the radius of curvature of the circle is always constant r because it has the same curvature all over uh, uh, its length. But here in this curve, the radius of curvature keep changing, might keep changing depending on the problem. So here in our problem, it keeps changing. That's why we call it general uh, row. And uh, we call the a change. So let's uh, define our parameters. So from the last time, we first start by the position. So the position is, is the location of the particle with respect to the origin. So we call it S. And second is the uh, displacement, is the change in the particle position. So it's the first position is S1 and the final position is S2. So we define the uh, displacement as delta S, which is equal S2 uh, minus S1. So let's get to the, uh, so this is similar to the uh, rectilinear motion, but this displacement uh, is a part of a curve. So uh, we call the uh, displacement, like if we, if we have a very small angle, d theta, this change in the displacement will be ds. And if we want to get the length of df, ds, Assuming that in the range of d theta, the radius of curvature hasn't been changed dramatically, so it's almost the same because the angle is very small, we can say that ds will be equal to rho d theta. So this is similar to the concept of the uh, circle uh, circumference. So like, you know that the circumference of the circle is two pi r, which is coming from that this is the angle is 330, uh, 360 degree and you know r so the this is 2 pi so the circumference is 2 pi by r because this is the whole angle but right now our angle is a small d theta so this part of the curve is zero uh, d theta so this is how the the ds look like so let's get the velocity and see how can we use this ds to uh, get the velocity so, as we know that the velocity is the time rate of a change of the uh, position. So let's just like right here. As we know that the velocity is always tangential to the, uh, to the uh, motion. So let's draw the, let's draw a new curve like this. And let's put our point here. And let's put the velocity. So the velocity is always tangent. So let's draw. So this is the tangent. And the normal is always in the direction of the center of curvature. So this is the center of curvature.
and this is the tangent at this location. And these are perpendicular to each other. So here's the tangent and here's the normal. And the velocity is always in the tangent direction. So it's in this direction. So if we want to write the uh, velocity vector here, V, it should be equal to the, uh, the magnitude of the velocity and it has a unit direction in the uh, tangent direction. So we call it T hat. Sometimes we call the uh, tangent and normal, uh, the unit vector of the tangent and normal. So sometimes we call it T hat or U T hat or E T hat. So I might use them uh, uh, like I to change the, uh, but all of them should be the same. And similarly is the N hat, we call it U N hat or E N hat. A uh, Hebler textbook is using this one. We sometimes will use this one. So here's the, the V. And for the acceleration, we will have two components. So we will have a component in the tangent direction, we call it ET, and another component in the normal direction, we will call it EN. And the AT is the in the direction of T hat, and EN is in the direction of N hat. And we will see how can we get uh, these two uh, components. But this is how it, it looks like. So let's get how we can get this velocity vector. So for the velocity vector, as we said, that the V is equal to uh, the magnitude of the velocity in the direction of U T hat. V is equal to the time rate of the change of the position, dS <clears throat> dt. As we know from here, that the dS is equal rho d theta. So dS dt, we will have to, will be rho and d theta over dt. So just like putting dt here and dt here, it will go use this equation and it will end with rho theta dot, where rho is the radius of curvature and theta dot is the, um, uh, the time rate of the change of the uh, angle or what we call it the angular velocity. So this is for the velocity. And if we want to write the V vector in a final form, so it will be equal rho theta dot. So this is the magnitude and in the direction of u t hat. So we know how is the velocity vector look like for a tangent normal uh, coordinate system. So let's get to the uh, hardest part, which is the uh, acceleration. So for the acceleration, as I told you, it's two components, a component in the tangent direction and another component in the normal direction. But we need to prove this that the acceleration has these two components. So from verse the principles, the, the acceleration is the time rate of the change of the velocity, dv dt. However, uh, the velocity here is completely different from the, um, from the linear uh, velocity because the velocity is keep changing its direction from point to point, like assumes a circle, the velocity is that tangent. When I come here, here's the tangent. When I come here, here's the tangent, here's the tangent, and here's the tangent. So the UT hat is keep it changing as it moves on the bass. So it, the velocity might be changed in, in terms of magnitude as the theta dot change, and also it might, change in the direction or might it change in post like magnitude and direction. So when we take the derivative, it is not similar like the uh, rectilinear motion because uh, we know that the velocity is going either into the positive or negative direction. So the, the direction is not a changing. But here, every, every mo movement has different directions. So if we want to take the derivative, so we will consider like let's uh, say here that V equal V in the direction of UT hat. So if we want to take the derivative of two terms, so we will differentiate the first term with respect to time multiplied by UT hat plus DUT hat DT 
multiplied by b. So the derivative of the second term multiplied by the first term. So let's see how this will be look like. We want to know what is the value of this derivative. So to get the value of this derivative, so let's assume here is our curve. And then we have here, and let's make a small angle dc to here. So here is the ut hat, and here is the ut hat dash. So here is how the ut hat it changes its direction uh, from these two points. Like, and then I have here is the u and hat, and it should be normal to this one. So if we put these two on the same curve, like let's make it bigger here. So here I have u n hat, and here is how the u t hat look like. And the change in the direction from u t hat to u t hat dash looks like this. Here is u t hat dash. And this angle is DCF. This is how the angle is keep changing. So it should be equal to the This D theta is very small angle. Like D theta is almost equal to zero. And if I, I want to get like the rate of a change like this distance, like this one. So this is a triangle and this angle should be 90 degree and this angle should be 90 degree. It's not exactly 90, it's like 89.999 because this angle is very, very small. So uh, the sum of these two angles should be equal to uh, 180 degrees. So it's, it's kind of like they are better. So like, I mean, uh, uh, these two lines are like this, better to each other because this angle is very, very small. So if we want to get the DUT hat, the rate of a change in the U from UT to UT hat dash, it will be equal DUT hat. So it will be equal to uh, like what we did over here. DS is equal to rho D theta. So it's the value, uh, it's the magnitude of the rho multiplied by D theta. So here is the same. It will be multiplied the magnitude of this line multiplied by d theta. So the magnitude of u t hat multiplied by d theta. And what is the direction of the u t hat? So this is 90 degree and this is 90 degree. So the direction of the u t hat should be because this two lines should be parallel is in the direction of the u n hat. So the magnitude of the UT hat, because it's a unit vector, so we know the magnitude is one, and we only use the direction of these vectors. So the magnitude of this is one. And finally, you will end up with that the UT, the DUT hat is equal to UN hat d theta. And if you want the DUT hat dt, it should be equal to d theta dt in the direction of the UN hat. So let's get back, let's take this. Okay. All right, what happened here? And take it here. All right, that's will take forever. All right, so so let's get back to this equation. So we know that this is now equal to um, d. dc to dt in the un hat direction. So 
the acceleration vector will be equal dv dt. And we know from here that the v is equal to, uh, uh, is equal to rho theta dot. So if we differentiate rho theta dot with respect to t, it will give us rho theta double dot and it will be in the direction of ut hat and putting this d theta dt, it will, we can like, this is theta dot and we know that v is equal to rho theta dot. So you multiply it by rho theta dot, which is the v here. So it will give you rho theta dot square in the direction of the un hat. So this is finally, we'll end up with like two equations, <clears throat> which is the most important equations for the tangent normal. V is equal rho theta dot in the tangent direction and D A is equal rho theta double dot in the UT direction plus rho theta dot square in the uh, normal direction. This is the most important two equations that we will be using. All right, so let's do some analysis to these equations. So the, uh, the value rho theta dot is the magnitude in the tangential direction. And the, the A, the acceleration is equal to A tangent and the U T hat plus A normal and the U N hat. So the tangent acceleration will be equal to rho theta double dot and the normal acceleration will be equal to rho theta dot square. So this is the tangent and normal acceleration that we were be talking about here. So here's the tangent, here's the tangent, and here's the normal acceleration. So we can write the uh, normal acceleration in different forms. So we might like say that the normal will be equal to rho square theta dot square over rho. So this term, like if you squared this, will give you the V tangent square. So we can say that this will be equal V tangent square over rho. So both uh, could work. Like you can use either of them or you can use the regular one rho theta dot square. So this is the values of the A, uh, the normal uh, acceleration. So this is so far for the uh, tangent uh, normal acceleration. I would just like want to uh, list a definitions of the uh, tangent and normal acceleration. So the uh, tangent acceleration is the time rate of a change of the uh, velocity magnitude. And this is obvious because, because when we uh, get, when we get here, when we differentiate this, we first differentiate the magnitude and all the magnitude is in UT hat. So it's the time rate of change of the magnitude of the velocity. And the normal acceleration is the time rate of change of the direction of the velocity. So as you can see, okay, let's put it here first, En, is the time rate change of the velocity direction. So assume that we have a curve like this and let's see how is the, uh, the acceleration look like. Always the, the normal acceleration is in the direction of the N which is tower this to the center of the curvature. And the tangent is, is uh, the tangent acceleration could be in the direction of the velocity or could be 
in the other direction, depending uh, if the particle is accelerating or decelerating. So if this is n, e n, and this is the a tangent, so the magnitude will be in this direction. Here, the, uh, the, the normal acceleration should be in the direction of the, uh, the center of curvature. And here is the a tangent and should be the acceleration in this direction. So this is the a n and this is the a uh, tangent. So this is how it looks like in terms of uh, if we are going to use the uh, tangent and normal acceleration in, in our, uh, the tangent and normal coordinate system in our problem. So let's see a, a very quick example on <clears throat> tangent normal acceleration. Okay, let's get this one. Right, so it says that this skier is reaches to point A. So he's moving like at this location. And then he reaches point A, which at X uh, equal to 10 meter and Y is equal to five meter. Uh, and uh, the parabolic curve that he is moving on is equal to Y is equal to one over 20 X square. Uh, he has a speed of six meter per second. So uh, does anybody know uh, what is the direction of this speed? If it, is it tangent or normal? Answer if you want. Does anybody know, like uh, it says that the speed is six meter per second. So what is the, uh, the component of this speed? Is it tangent or is it normal? It would be tangent, wouldn't it? Yeah, so uh, does it have a normal component? No. Yes. Yeah, uh, no, it doesn't have. Yeah, I mean, like, yes, you're right. Uh, so because the velocity is always in the tangent direction, so it shouldn't have any normal direction because it's always tangent to the pass that you are uh, moving on. So we know from this problem that the V tangent is equal to six meter per second. And it says it's increasing. So, uh, and when we say that the magnitude of the speed is increasing, so what is the uh, component of this acceleration? Is it tangent or normal? Yeah, you can answer it. It, it would be tangent as well. Yes, exactly. So, because as it says, like when we say that the speed is accelerating or decelerating with this rate, so it's the tangent component because the normal component is only related to the direction, not the, the magnitude. So this is two meter per second squared. So we know the tangent velocity and we know the uh, tangent uh, acceleration. So uh, he's asking determine the direction of his velocity and the direction and magnitude of his acceleration. So let's get the uh, number one, the uh, direction of the velocity. So for the velocity direction, let's draw it here. I have the equation of this curve. And I know that the V is always tangent to this curve. So if I know that Y is equal to one over 20 X square, I know that the tangent is equal, is the, is the in the same direction of the velocity. So I can get dy dx, which is the slope at this point, which is, which is then the same direction of the uh, velocity. So, 
we can get dy dx, which will be equal. So you know y is equal one over 20 x squared. So it will be a two multiplied by one over 20 multiplied by x. So it will be one over 10 x. So this is the uh, general uh, slope at any point x, but we, we wanted the slope at this instant at x equal 10 meter. So dy dx at x equal 10 meter, it will be equal to one. If you multiply 10 by one over 10, it will give you one. So let's get one should be equal to the tan theta. So we, you can get theta, it will be equal to 45 degree. So we know that the angle here is 45 degree, but we know that the skier is moving down. So this angle is 45 degree as well. So we can say that the velocity magnitude is equal to six meter per second and the direction is 45 degree measured from this horizontal. So this is how we get the velocity direction by differentiating uh, the equation of the path. So let's get to the, uh, the direction and the magnitude of the acceleration. Let's get to the acceleration. So we know that the acceleration has two components, like A has A tangent in the tangent direction, plus A normal in the normal direction. We know one of them, the tangent direction, uh, but we don't know the normal direction. So we know from here that the A normal is equal to V, the tangent, the V tangent square over the row and or equal to the row multiplied by theta dot square. So we know V tangent, but we don't know the row. So there is an equation for, you should like uh, have this equation in your uh, 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 dynamic sheet for rho. So let's write the equation of rho. So if you have, let's put it as a note here. Let's double check if you have this equation in your uh, dynamic sheet or not. Um, materials. Yeah, this sheet. Yeah, here's the rule. So the radius of curvature of any function that, that is equal y equal f of x, it equal to this function. You shouldn't memorize it, but if you want, it's your decision, but it's in your equation sheet and you can use it directly uh, in solving your problems. So rho, rho is equal to one plus dy dx square to the power three over two over the second derivative of dy dx. So let's make double check it's right, yeah. Okay, so we have dy dx is equal to one at this instance. So we need to get d square y dx square. By the way, if you tried this with the uh, circle equation, which is equal to uh, x square plus y square, equal to r square, it should give you r. So this, this is valid for any, uh, any, curve, any curve that. Okay, so let's get the second derivative. So we have the first derivative is equal one over 10 multiplied by x and the second derivative of this will be uh, one over 10. So let's substitute in this equation to get the rho. So rho should be equal to one and dy dx at 10 meter, we found it equal one. 
squared to the power three over two. All of this is divided by one over 10. So this should give you, uh, after you solving that will give you 28.28. I think the, uh, the things here is in meter. So this is the radius of curvature. So if we want to get the, uh, the normal acceleration, so a n should be equal to v t square over rho, and the v t is given six, and rho is twenty eight point two eight. So the normal acceleration should be equal one point two seven meter per second squared. So we got the e n, and we have the a tangent. So right now we can write the uh, the acceleration vector. So the a tangent is equal to two meter per second squared. So it's two in the tangent direction plus 1.27 in the normal direction. So if we want the magnitude of the acceleration, so we know that right now we have um, like, let's, let's draw it here. We know that this is here has a tangent acceleration in this direction is equal to two and a normal acceleration is equal to 1.27. So the magnitude should be like something like this in this direction. So let's get the magnitude of the acceleration. So A should be equal to the root of two square plus 1.27 square. If you calculate this, it will give you 2.37 meter per second squared. Let's get the direction of the acceleration. You can get the direction by uh, tan theta will be equal the y component 1.27 over two, and you will get theta should be equal to 30. Let's call it not theta, let's call it p. Will give you 32.4 one degree, but make sure like, uh, I have the, um, the curve is like this and this is, let's make it, did we get the angle yet? It's 45 degree, so, okay. And we have the velocity in this direction in the, which is the same as the tangent direction. And here is the normal direction. And here's the horizontal. We know that the tangent direction is 45 degrees. So this angle is 45 degree. This angle is measured from the, uh, is measured from the uh, here. From this, from this line, because uh, I measured this based on this tangent. So 32.41 is measured from here, not from X axis. It's measured from the, because I, I, get, I get the tan phi based on these values from the tangent. So it's measured from the tangent 32.4 a one degree. So if we want to uh, get this angle, so we should, let's call it C, should be 45 minus 32.41, which will give you a 12.58 degree. So the acceleration magnitude equal to 2.37 meter per second square and the direction from the horizontal is 12.58 uh, degree. So this is how we uh, solve it, the problem. So basically we uh, differentiate, we get dy dx to get the, uh, uh, to get the, uh, the slope or the direction of the tangential velocity. And then we use this equation to get the radius of curvature and we use the tangent, uh, the tangent velocity along with the radius of curvature to calculate the magnitude of the normal acceleration 
then we put the uh, me the uh, acceleration vector in terms of uh, tangential acceleration and normal acceleration to get the magnitude, and then we get the direction. So this is how uh, the uh, solving this problem uh, look like. So um, let's uh, let's solve another problem here. Does anybody have any question on this problem or any issues or anything need to be more uh, clarified? This is the second problem. All right. So in this example, it says that you, a race car C travels around the horizontal circular track. So this is a circle, circular track with R equal 300 foot. If the car is increases its speed at a constant rate. So if it says increases its speed at constant rate. So this is this a tangent or a normal acceleration? Anybody can answer this question. Nobody know the answer of this question? Okay, so uh, increasing the speed, like it says the, the speed is getting increased with a constant rate. So this means that this is a tangent acceleration. And starting from rest determine, so we know that the V node and T node and S, all of these is equal to zero, determine the time needed for it to reach an acceleration of eight foot per second. So here, it's a general definition of the acceleration. It says that reach an acceleration of eight foot per second. It doesn't say uh, it reach uh, the, the position uh, uh, the speed is increasing by eight foot per second. So this means that this is the total acceleration, but this mean is the tangent acceleration. So this is how the language look like. Speed is with constant rate, seven foot per second. This is eight tangent. And uh, it requires the determine the time needed for it to reach an acceleration eight foot per second square. And what is the speed at this instant? So let's get to the. So we have at this instant that the eight tangent is equal to seven foot per second square, and a normal, we know it's equal to the B tangent over rho. And here's a circle, so the rho is equal to R. So this will be, oh, this is Vt square. And this should be equal to, yeah, okay. So we know that the A tangent, if we go back, here is equal to rho theta dot is the time rate of change. So, so the A tangent is equal to dv dt. And then you will 
So this is the time rate of change of the velocity. And let's delay this right now until we get the dv. So we will be using the term that he said, the, um, it's a starting from rest. So we know the v node. So here, dv should be equal to at dt. And if we integrate this relationship from v node up to v and from t node up to t, so this will be end up with v minus v node is equal to an at, it says a, a constant. So we know it's a constant acceleration, so we can't take it outside the integration. So it will be at t minus t node. And what is next is v node is equal to zero, t node is equal to zero. And the V, which we know it's a, the tangent velocity is equal to the A tangent seven multiplied by T. So we got the velocity as a function of T. So this is how we basically move from the A tangent to get the V tangent. So always the V tangent can give you the A tangent by the differentiation, or you can get this by the integration or the reverse by the differentiation. So we have the V tangent. So let's get now to the A normal. So A normal is equal to the V tangent square over rho. So it will be 49 T square. You just squared this value. And the rho is equal to 300. So if you calculate this value with your calculator, it will give you 0.163 t square, and then you know that the magnitude of the acceleration is equal to a tangent square plus a normal square because a is equal to a t in the t hat plus a normal in the n hat. So we know here, uh, starting from this, determine the time needed for it to reach an acceleration eight. So a should be equal to the tangent acceleration is constant equal to seven foot. So it will be here 49 plus a normal square. So we need to square this. So it should be if you square 0.163, it should get you 0 0.027. And if you square the t square, it should give you t to the power four. So you might do this a square and do this a square and solve it by your hand, or you just use your calculator. You will end up with T should be equal after you getting the fourth root of some values here. So the time will be 4.87 seconds. So this is the time uh, needed for, e, for, for, the, for the car to reach an acceleration eight foot per second square. So what is the speed at this instant? So V, which is the speed, equals 70 from this relationship. So we multiply seven, multiply by 4.87 should give you 33.98 meter per second. So this is the solution for this problem. So how we moved from the tangent acceleration to the uh, tangent velocity by integration, and then from tangent velocity to normal acceleration using this rule. And finally, we get the, uh, the magnitude of A, and then we get to the time uh, T. Does anybody have any question on this problem? Okay, so. I'll just explain the, uh, the idea of this problem. I'll take a little time to open. Okay. Let's get back to that. So in this problem, it says that this automobile has a speed of 80 foot per second. So you know the tangent velocity for this problem. 
And at point A, uh, uh, this velocity is at point A, which is this point, and an acceleration having a magnitude of 10 foot per second squared. So we know, so this is the total acceleration because it says general acceleration, not uh, saying the speed is accelerating with this rate. So the total acceleration is 10 foot per second squared acting in this direction. So we know that A, so we can easily get the En and At pi using this angle. So A should be equal to 10 foot per second squared, the magnitude of the acceleration, sine 30. So this is the A normal. Acting in the direction shown determine the radius of curvature of this path at point A. So you basically calculate this value, which should be equal to five foot per second square. And then the, uh, the uh, radius, we know that the An is equal to V square over rho. So the rho is equal to V square over An. So we know that V is equal to 80 square and the uh, an is equal to five you finally will able to get the radius and this should be equal to one to eight uh, uh 1280 foot this is the radius of this curve so it's a very simple problem you just like know what what you want you have a so you get en and you have the the tangential and you basically use this rule to solve this problem also, this is uh, another example that shows uh, a car moving on a straight line and then enter a curve that has a radius of 240 foot. So uh, you basically have here uh, the V dot. It says uh, the automobile started at distance zero. If its uh, speed is increased, so you know the A tangent is equal to 0 0.05 T square, which is the V dot where T is, uh, I think there's something wrong with the text here, is in second, determine the magnitude of its velocity. And at T equal to uh, 80 seconds. So you basically uh, will integrate this to get the V tangent. So if you want to get V, you will integrate this to square dt. So you will get the, uh, uh, the velocity and it should be from zero up to time t, and this should be equal to 0 0.017 uh, t cube, and then you can get the v at t equal uh, 18 seconds. So you can get uh, the velocity, and if you want to get the position, you will integrate the v, uh, you will integrate the v with respect to t, and then you will get S and then finally you will you can uh, know the how much distance of the body is the the body start here and if the distance is 500 foot so you want to determine if he's still on the curve or he's outside the curve so you will need to calculate this which is pi over two r because it's uh, one quarter of a circle and then uh, if you want to uh, get the uh, a n, which will be equal to the V that you calculated here, square over rho. So it's basically you are using chain equations for the uh, normal acceleration. Sometimes you will need to do some integrations to get the velocity and, and get the position. So this is most all of the problems, like uh, you will have like uh, to use the, uh, the equations that we learned in this lectures and mainly the, uh, the normal acceleration because this is something uh, new. So uh, yeah, uh, does anybody have any question? And this, I, I'm trying to solve as many problems with you as I can. Uh, so you get familiar with the problems. You might find some sort of example in the Hepler textbook. So you might uh, try some of them. And if you have some time, you might like look on the, uh, the problems in the unsolved problems and also the practice problems on Canvas. If you, uh, have some time. Right now with this background, I think you will be able to start homework two, which is due to next Monday, and you will be good to go with this homework. So does anybody have any questions on today's lecture?
I have a question about the first homework. You have a question? Yeah, about the um the second problem on the first homework. This one? Uh no, on the um on the homework, my bad. On the homework? Yes. Oh, uh, which one? Homework one? Yeah, homework one, number two. Okay. It's the um Tesla question. Okay. So Yep. I was able to solve B and C fine, but um, I couldn't solve A for some reason. And uh, I just wanted to know if I was thinking it through right. Because um, so it gives us the 60 miles an hour, which you have to convert to meters a second. Yeah. But then to get the um, to find the time, don't you have to use the relationship A equals DV DT? And then you end up integrating uh, each side to find uh like the velocity equation with t and then you solve for t um i think you will um uh, at zero so you will just find the t at zero mm -hmm. you will just substituting the uh, uh oh this is the uh, the velocity so i think you will need to go to the velocity because this is it's a take to accelerate from zero to 60 mile per hour so this is a speed not acceleration uh -huh. and then with the um acceleration it gives us in the um like the, kind of the description of the problem, we differentiate that to get- Yeah, and you will get V, mm -hmm. and then you'll substitute with V. When you get V, you'll substitute with zero and 60 mile per hour after transforming them to meter per second. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I was, I did all of them. For some reason, I just can't get the answer. <laughs> okay, so I might like, uh, because I know that the time of lecture is out, so we might do a help session and just do your best on this. Mm -hmm. And I will be posting the uh, answers uh, tomorrow. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And uh, and uh, just email me with this. and might like give you some hints how to solve it. Like just send me an email. And then I will uh, I will send you uh, uh, back how to solve it like an idea. Okay. Gotcha. Because I, I think Sounds I good. Have yeah. I, I appreciate your effort. Yeah. Have a good day, everyone. You too. Yeah. Bye.